Coronavirus and the Mayan calendar. What's the connection? And what can we do about it? Um, the Mayans political leader, Don Alejandro, he is also a prophetic person. He is the spiritual uh, leader of the Quiche Mayas as well. And uh, he's perhaps the most famous Mayan uh, personality. He, there was a very famous documentary called The Shift of the Ages. Uh, it was uh, released in 2010, circa 2010. And uh, I actually talk about it and I, I love to talk about these prophecies as well. I would like to approach the Mayan wisdom and the Mayan calendar as much as possible from their perspective. And he's my best source in this light. Uh, I know best what he talks about, the Mayan calendar. So, uh, about nine months ago, it was uh, June of 2019, I released a video talking about this in a very long way. It was like a half an hour video. You can see it here. You can uh, click on it and watch that video. I was talking about how Don Alejandro was explaining the prophecies of the Mayas. And... I know for most of you this sounds almost ridiculous like it was a story in 2012 back in 2012 and then there was nothing happened and then that's it we can just throw this idea to the garbage but don alejandro was even in 2000s like uh, in 2008 2009 he was saying that this long count calendar which is supposed to end in 2012 december 21st is something that is lost to us. We don't know if this, this is correct date or not. This is actually a date that is uh, given to them by the archaeologists. It's not coming from the Mayas themselves. The archaeologists look at the, uh, analyze the archaeological findings and then they conclude that this should be the end date. So he says that we are not sure if this is 2012, but it's not so far as well. Because we are living in the age of contamination. Everything is getting contaminated. Our world is getting polluted. We are messing up with climate. And for example, just think about Fukushima. The nuclear reactor is still leaking react, uh, nuclear uh, toxicity to the Pacific Ocean for nine years today. It's been nine years. And uh, this is just one thing. And also our personal relationships, our social life, has been contaminated so mother earth the planet earth is suffering big time therefore there needs to be a kind of purification every big contamination is followed by big purification so this time for big purification is coming up we are not sure if it's 2012 it can be that it's 2015 or 2020 or maybe another day but he clearly mentioned that it could be 2015 it could be 2020 or another day so maybe we are already going into this stage. So when I think about what's happening today, first of all, we are raising our consciousness. This is also what he was saying. We have to go through a purification, which will help us to raise our consciousness and we will wake up. We will remember where we are coming from and we will realize that we are all one. As humanity, we are all connected. So what is happening these days due to the coronavirus and the epidemic and pandemic or quarantine, however you want to look at it, it's giving us this feeling of connectedness that we are realizing that as humanity, we are one and we need to do something to stay strong and we are all getting connected and we are realizing our power. And also we are, for example, what's happening in Italy. The water is getting clean and the dolphins started coming back to the city of Venice. This is just one example of how much we have been contaminated the planet and how easy it can be reverted if you just change our lifestyle. And we are forced to do that by this virus. So it's kind of funny if you think about how everything is connected. The virus is... We don't know where it's coming from. There are conspiracy theories and I don't want to go there. But... As an end result, what is happening in reality is that we are stopping our daily activities and it's time to reflect on what we have been doing. Maybe this virus is a result of contamination as well. So, and 
all the global warming uh, activists, they talk about over activity of the industries and travel and all these air companies. Now the flight companies, the air companies are getting big troubles because everybody stopped traveling. So, and the whole economy, the whole market is about to stop. People are feared and I am actually, I have a similar fear. I also think that we can have a huge financial crisis and this is not good for many things, for many reasons, but it's very, it's maybe necessary, very necessary for the planet to recover. So this is kind of an interesting time, really. It's very difficult to understand and interpret what's really going on. Some people say, oh, it's the uh, agenda of the dark forces and they want to change the whole humanity, implement chips in our bodies. Maybe they are right. And some people are saying that, look, especially uh, people who are non-conformists, who are like, oh, the global warming, we are messing up with the planet. This is good that we stop and we realize that we have to stop. It's kind of a defense mechanism of the planet. Whatever perspective you're having, um, I would encourage you to stay in your center, be in your center and look at things from the spiritual perspective. Like try to open your heart and see the unity. Like we are all one. We are not just one as nations. We are one rich and poor, um, black and white, different races, male and female, different nationalities all around the world. And we are one with the planet itself as well. And our activities and the activities of the earth are connected very deeply. I mean, if you look at it from a very far perspective, like the whole world is just one, right? This um, blue ball, like we just see oceans and sky and land and the, all of us living on it. We are not separate. We are kind of living in an illusion by the financial uh, industries and uh, capitalistic economy that the market is determining everything the trade and business we are super powerful we think we're we're arrogantly thinking that we can do whatever we want it's all about mechanics of economy and mathematics and finance and things like that but there are many things that we cannot calculate and looking at from the mayan perspective it all makes sense to me because he was saying that 2012 is maybe not this end date. We're going to have the shift of the ages. We're going to shift our consciousness. We're going to raise our consciousness and become more aware. Everybody is becoming more aware these days, right? Like everybody is doing Facebook Live and Instagram Live and we are sharing our wisdom. We are getting connected to each other. Even though we cannot socially connect very much, we have the internet and we all have these tools and it's very easy to just connect. Like I'm just making this video it took me just one minute to set up everything and I can talk to you. And the contamination is there. It's obvious that if we continue like this, we're going to mess up everything. Like nobody's thinking about Fukushima. Who remembers about Fukushima? For nine years, every day, every hour, every minute, um, this reactor is leaking radioactivity into the Pacific Ocean. And if we don't do anything about it another 10 years, 20 years, Maybe all life on the oceans will die. So this is just one thing. Climate change is another thing. So we have to wake up. This is time to wake up. And we, it's not just about waking up to these ecological problems, economical problems. It's also waking up to our soci sociological problems, like how much judgment we are having. On Facebook and social media especially, people are becoming very judgmental. And there's a lot of polarity going on. Now it's time to realize we're all one and take action together. And it's also on our uh, smaller scale, like our personal relationships, where we are standing, like what is really important? Is that fight that we have done with our partner like three days ago is important or this moment that we realize that whatever happens, life is very precious and we can just lose our life. P many people are dying. Like many people are, have been dying, by the way, not just by COVID-19. Influenza is killing more people. Nobody, we, we, we didn't pay attention to this before. Now we are even paying attention to that. So this is also a little bit difficult time because we are kind of forced to stay disconnected physically and maybe we cannot have so much uh, physical contact and intimacy with our loved ones. We cannot hug, we cannot kiss, we cannot socialize a lot. 
and we are kind of having an introvert life, a pushed, a forced introvert life. And uh, I like to spend a lot of time at home actually. And there are many things I love to do alone. Actually, I I was waiting for this. Like, I have books to read, the detoxes to make, and projects to realize. And now I have time for all of that. And one of them is I want to share with you uh, not just the Mayan wisdom, but uh, more about emotional strength and the willpower and how to do time management, get more pro productive, and also take care of our health and body. These are the things that I really. Um, interest me for a long time for example my immune system had been very weak very very weak since i was a child i was getting sick really bad every winter and the doctors would give me antibiotics every winter and i would eat them and get i think this really messed up my whole body uh, can you imagine like 18 years until 18 years old every winter i was eating antibiotics and when i was 18 i had a kind of awakening and with like becoming mature becoming adult it was one of my first decisions. Like, I will stop using antibiotics. Whatever happens, I will go through the sickness without them. And since that day, my body, my health changed quite a lot. Um, I stopped getting sick. Like, next winter, I didn't get sick. And I almost never got sick again. And I never used antibiotics again since I'm 18 years old. And I, when I was 28 and 30, in those years, I was going deeper into yoga and all these symptoms came back. It's like a homeopathic procedure process that I've been through. And uh, all these uh, suppressed things from my childhood, they started coming up in the middle of a hot Thailand summer. And I was surprised because there's no cold to trigger these things. And uh, I was very lucky. I had a guide who was a medical doctor, who was a homeopath. She was saying that this is just a purification. And I learned quite a lot since that day. And uh, I want to share with them with you, like there are many things, hacks or uh, tricks we can apply to strengthen our immune system. I want to keep doing these videos. I want to keep sharing this wisdom with you. Also about being productivity, be productive and uh, how to stay strong emotionally. Uh, one of the things is our society is, uh, the, our culture is, our lifestyle is kind of pushing us to, have high expectations about everything and this makes us very happy like we need to be happy all the time we need to be stimulated all the time we need to watch some movie some uh, tv series or do some interesting thing and really stimulate ourselves all the time we are kind of addicted to distraction as robin sharma says that he's one of my uh, coaches and authors and it's also time that when we are at home we have to be really careful not to over consume these media and and instead, we can be very creative, we can be very productive. It's time to read books. Like if you have a list of books to read, which I have, it's time to finish those books. And actually, we can even now we have technology. We have an amazing app called Audible, and I really love it. A minimum half an hour every day, I listen to audiobooks, really good quality audiobooks. And I can even recommend you some of them under this video in the comments. You can see them. Um, Writing is very important. Writing is, you don't have to be a writer. You don't have to write a book. Writing journal is a very super efficient way to handle with difficult emotions, difficulties in life. I shared a video a couple of weeks ago about how difficult my life is and how I overcome about them. And you can also listen to it here. Um, writing a journal helped me tremendously. And I changed habits. Habit installation is super important. Like, I recently heard in a podcast that our success is not about doing something uh, like once or twice. It's about our habits. Our daily habits bring the benefits and bring the results. So we can, uh, we have the time now. Like if you have been working nine to five, now you're working at home, you can change a lot of things. Like I've been working at home for almost all my life. So, and this kind of helped me to realize this habit installation protocols, like if I'm alone, if everything is going okay, I have morning routines and other routines during, during the day. I have uh, like weekly detox or monthly detox or seasonally detoxes that I'm doing. Detox is very important too. It's time to do a lot of detox. Like we are not just talking about purification of the mother earth and the ecology, but our body is very important as well. Of course, it changes our consciousness. It changes our mind, our emotions. If our body is toxic, if it's full with 
uh, my our, our internal organs are full with toxicity it's very difficult to put, think positive and take action and do something like today i've started my really major uh, detox my most efficient hardest at the same time detox i, I want to talk about it as well but before coming into that there are many different uh, beginner level intermediate level much easier detoxes that you can apply this also help you strengthen your immune system like if you're again if you're full with toxins your immune system will also have a lot of difficulty to uh, stay strong so yeah stay strong is also like it's the it's the key word for me it's, this is a real message for me to uh, uh, to share with you stay strong it will pass like as buddha said once that there's nothing that doesn't change everything is changing so that this will pass and there we will come together and we will these quarantines will end and the coronavirus will become a more uh, mediocre virus and it will still be killing people but not as uh in an epidemic level in a pandemic level it's, it's going to be like influenza influenza is very uh, fatal as well um and all these problems that psychologically challenging us they will all change and now it's time to get strong like this is the thing i was trying to tell you in a minute before like the culture is putting in a uh, in a psychological state of mind that we always have to be happy we always have to stimulate ourselves and things go wrong we become very weak and uh, we, we collapse and the last two years of my life have been very difficult and i learned quite a lot of things how to stay strong whatever happens like if nobody's dying here you can still survive if it doesn't kill you it will make you stronger so if you want to uh, listen more about what i will share uh, about emotional strength physical detox and strengthening immune system and all that please subscribe to my channel because when you subscribe i know that you want to listen to me you want you are interested in my content and i will keep creating this content and if you are interested as well uh, I'm just creating a Patreon account and you can uh, donate uh, for me to keep going in this direction as well. So I love you. Take good care. Wash your hands. Stay away from people. Help the doctors. Help the medical community. And don't forget, this will pass. I wish you a great day.